Hi everyone. So you may have heard that there's a new version of Overseer in use. I'm assuming you've all heard of Overseer anyway. And if you're watching this video, hopefully it's to get an idea of some of the, the features and the operation of the new version of the tool. So today we're going to run through a bit of a demonstration of Overseer FM, the new version. And we'll talk about what it does and why and generally provide the sort of information you hopefully are after or if you're dealing with farmers and stakeholders that they may be after. So to join to talk through us today I'm joined by two of the team from Overseer, Alistair Taylor, Business Development Manager, and Carly Slews, uh, Customer Support Specialist. So some of the audience will be quite familiar with Overseer, um, or perhaps not. Some of the ones that are familiar are talking with farmers and stakeholders, so I don't know who wants to answer the question, but what's the, the elevator pitch or the sound bite? What's, um, what is Overseer, for those that aren't familiar with it? Why do we use it? What are the benefits to farmers and industry? Yeah, so I mean, I guess the, the, the biggest uh, benefit around Overseer is it allows you to bring uh, the science which has been generated by New Zealand and science community over the last 30 years onto your farm in a way that allows you to make decisions about how to farm more efficiently um, from a, a production and from an environmental uh, point of view. Uh, and I guess one of the, the biggest uh, criticisms of Overseer over the years uh, has been that it's been quite difficult to use. It was developed out of some uh, software which is used internally by the CRIs back in the 1980s. Uh, and so what Overseer FM is, is really taking the model um, so the science in, in, in Overseer hasn't, hasn't changed at this point, um, but the user experience has. Um, and the real focus of the new software is, is putting the farm back at the center of that software um, and giving the farmer more control over how they use the software, who they use the software with, and, and how they share that data once they've created it. Okay, so we're going to get into specific, specifics, but the names change. What's the FM stand for? So it's Overseer Farm Modeling, um, and that's really to reflect the, the fact that up until now there's only been one version, there's only been one piece of software available, uh -huh. just Overseer and, and whatever the current science engine version has been. Um, we're working with, with other parties at the moment to look at, at providing four products for the market. Um, so Overseer FM is obviously the one aimed at, at farmers and their advisors. Um, there's a data exchange product that we're, we're working on in terms of looking at what that aggregated data looks like for 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 the use of, of, uh, of, of you know, data data oh. users um, we've got overseer education for the Masseys and Lincolns of this world uh, and then overseer science which is something that will work with the science community around how do we further update the model so overseer FM is there really to, to, to okay. identify it as being focused on the farm all right Okay, and one last question before we actually look at the tool itself. Um, how do people get access to it or how do they get qualified to use it ultimately? Yep. Or is anybody able to click in and have a go or do you have to jump through some... Yeah, things? so I guess it, it's, it's, this is, it's a really good question um, and it, it really depends on why you're using it. So anybody can use Overseer um, and, and, and we would encourage people to, to use it. Um, there are some some modeling rules which uh, the new software guides you through essentially to try and make sure you use it in the right way um, and so if people then want to become more proficient in how it should be used and how it should be used appropriately for compliance purposes uh -huh. then that's when you look at the two Massey uh, sustainable nutrient management courses but essentially there's nothing to stop a farmer or um, you know someone just out of uni or whatever jumping in having a play with the software and, and we would certainly encourage people to do that with the new software. Excellent. All right, yeah. let's jump in and have a play. Yeah, so, get yeah, well, exactly. So to do that, then obviously I, I navigate to the overseer.org.nz uh, website, and we've got this subtle wee blue box down here which points you at uh, the new software, which hopefully will open up and, and sit in there waiting. Um, so for the purposes of this demonstration, we're actually going to use our beta site because um, we're, we're encouraging people to only have real farms loaded uh -huh. into the actual Overseer FM uh, software. Um, and we've got a beta site where we've got some, some easy, uh, it's easier for us to create uh, demonstration farms and things, so we'll just jump into there. So when you first navigate to the site, you, you can get a choice between register and log in. So registering is purely a case of um, creating an identity for yourself within the software um, to then go from there. So I've already got one, so we'll just jump in and um, we won't use Aaron's. <coughs> And this is all, as you said, anyone, member of the public can 
create an account at basically Absolutely. Anything. Yep. Hopefully that's right. So that takes us then to your dashboard um, and we can see in here now I've got a number of farms that I've already created um, and one of the first things we notice with with the new software is with the old overseer the the software was focused on the user uh -huh. so the user went in the user had a folder of all of their farms in there and only they could see them the big difference with overseer FM is it's a shared, what shared workspace so if I go in and look for an existing farm and I type in here something generic like farm then oh, and look at all farms then I can see there's 83 farms within the beta site that have got farm in the title. Uh -huh. So if that's a farm that I haven't got uh, access to at the moment, that I want to get access to because I'm going to do some work in, I can request access to that site, that farm, um, to then work with that person and, and the owner uh -huh. and the administrators of that account will get access to it. So they're, when it's live and people are using it, they're actually going to be able to see everybody else who's got their farms on Overseer potentially? So they can see they can see that the farm exists, they mm -hmm. can't actually get into the farm unless they've been granted uh, access to it. Um, so, so in terms of you know, a particular farm, if we look at this demonstration one today, then we can see on the right hand side here we've got farm access. So we can see that um, the owner of this at the moment, so I've nominated myself as the owner, so Taylor Ag Consulting, as I've called myself uh -huh. within, the, uh, within the beta site, is the owner of this particular farm. Um, and I've invited two other users, Caroline and Carly, uh, to have access to this farm. Caroline's only got right access, so she can go in and make changes to the analyses which are sitting against this farm. Carly I've given administrative access to, which means she can invite other administrators and other users mm -hmm. as well to, uh, to access the farm. So whoever is the farm owner, which, which we hope will be the genuine farm owner within the, within the software, um, then has the ability to decide who has access mm -hmm. to their farm. And what was um, the, I mean obviously you can see some regulatory or compliance reasons for doing that, I mean were there other reasons why you've added that? those features? What it, it's the, one of the key challenges we've seen with the legacy overseer software is this whole question around sharing data. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if, you're, if you're working with the legacy software and you know, I'm working on a farm and I want to share it with you Aaron, mm -hmm. then I've got to go into my legacy account, I've got to download the XML file, the analysis for that particular year and that farm. Um, stick that onto my computer, email that to you, you've then got to download it onto your computer, upload it into your account and then you can open it. And, and you're purely looking at single analyses within the old legacy software. As we can see here, um, if you've got year-end analyses, and this farm's got four year-end analyses set in there, we're starting to present back some trending. So we can see that this, this farm is actually can, beginning to raise its end loss over the years. Uh -huh. um, so in, even in terms of looking at some simple management practices, we can look at this dashboard of, of the farm analyses for a particular farm and look at how the farm is, is changing. So it's increased its nitrogen loss, it's increased its phosphorus loss, it's increased its GHG losses over the last four years. Uh -huh. So how does that sit against any consents it might have or against any particular regional plans it might be subject to or against any business objectives that that farm might have. So one of the things, and all of us that have worked in companies know version control is pretty important. Mm -hmm. Somebody fiddles with your document and changes it. Yep. So, um, as the owner of a, of a farm on overseas, you can track that, see who's done what and you when. Can, and and, and that, that's a really good point that with the with the old software, you didn't used to be able to do that. Um, you couldn't. I could send my XML file to you um, and you could leave my name on it and you could submit that uh -huh. to somebody else and you'd have no idea as to where I'd have no idea that you'd made changes to it. Whereas now, if we go into year ending 2018, we can see that we've actually got an audit log for all of these analysis. And at the moment, that's at quite a rudimentary level that says, okay, someone's updated the analyses, but taking this one as an example, then yesterday Carly's been in, or I mean, today Carly's been in and, and, and made some changes to this analysis. So if, if I'm lo looking at this and I'm working independently from her, I can then pick up the phone and say, hey Carly, what have you done? What have you changed in my analyses? Um, let's have a talk about why that's happened and what we're doing. Um, and we can see right the way through as to when changes have been made um, against this audit log. And last question on that one, um, it's only if you grant permission. I mean, um, 
I know farmers worry about, but regulatory bodies, regional council, so on, can't automatically get access to Absolutely it. not, to no, given. absolutely not. And we'll talk later around how you share that sort of information okay. with regional councils. But it's, yeah, it's absolutely up to uh, the farm owner and the administrators which they appoint uh -huh. who has access to their uh, data on, a, on a, an analysis basis. All right. So that's some of the admin stuff. So I think, Carly, you're going to take us through actually uh, making this thing tick. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is just look at an example file that we have. Um, it's We use an overseer is uh, creating blocks. So what you think about is your farm and how you manage it. Mm -hmm. And so it might start off with a land management unit or a land management block. Um, it might be based on the topography that you have. On this farm you can see that we've separated it out by uh, terraces or hills mm -hmm. um, and what you can also do is to create a block is to click and this might be a, a pasture block or a, a different topography it might be a crop block um, you can s s assign a, a riparian fenced wetlands there's a whole range of blocks that you can create so what you do is you choose it you choose a uh, a name for the block. I'm going to call this the home block because it's next to the house. Mm -hmm. The effective area is what we've pulled out from the map. Um, however, so that's, that's automatically calculated from yes, the boundaries you drew. Yep. Yes, so that automatically brings that through. However, if you know that that you can change the effective area, so if you haven't quite got the, the area completely correct, um, it'll bring through the, those soils and you also need to add in the distance from the coast. Okay. Is there any um, limit on that? I mean, people can change what they think the effective area is to any amount, irrespective of what's been calculated on the map? Yes, you can. So the map is, is at this stage cosmetic. Uh -huh. um, so it gives a, a visual representation for farmers to understand how their farm's been uh -huh. blocked, uh, kind of giving them more information and an understanding of what's going on. However, um, one thing to remember is we don't want small hectare box. Uh -huh. uh, just because of the way that the science engine operates around averaging. Um, you can't go under 0.1 of a hectare, but it's about balancing um, animals and pasture growth and the rest of it. So we encourage um, larger blocks, mm -hmm. um, and it's easier to understand for farmers as well. And the key there is not um, a boundary fence or anything like that, it's what land type and use. Absolutely. What you call. Yep. Yep. So just, I'd, this is one that came out when you were giving me the demo. From a regulatory point of view, is that not a concern that somebody could make a block five times as large as it is to spread their nitrogen or load over that? I mean, you guys didn't seem worried about it. Why shouldn't? Why is that not an issue? Um, you kind of go on what what is there. Like it, yeah. it, it's pretty easy to see if someone's played around okay. with heat tests. Yeah. Um, I always go on kind of what you can prove mm -hmm. um, and hopefully have faith in people to go yep. forward. Um, <laughs> but like I said, anything that they put in here, it should be the truth, yep. or as close to the truth as they can get. And it's a pretty quick, as you say, for people to actually check. Yes, yeah, it's quite it's easy to check. All right. So the next step, when you've created a block, it'll give you an indication of where it is. Um, what we were built into the Overseer FM, which wasn't available mm -hmm. in Legacy, is ability to see S maps. Okay. Um, which is? It's a soil map database run by Landcare. Mm -hmm. And uh, so some some parts of New Zealand are mapped and some are not. Mm -hmm. um, what you do if it is mapped is you quite you have a look at the, the block, you can see the two different soil types running through. Okay. And you can add, it's as simple as adding the block. So this is the soil type that's already been used with farms. So if you kind of know within your farm if that that soil type is that that whole block, uh -huh. then that's what you can put. But if you know, if you think you, it is separated into two different soil types, then you can bring that through as well. Just two types, or if S map says it's multiple, can it's you have up to three. Up to three. Yeah. Um, and so if if you've got a block, say like a. 500 hectare block uh -huh. that has nine different soil types. That's when you'd separate, separate uh -huh. it out. Or if you're confident that, and you believe you can and justify that same soil type for the whole block, then that's your choice. 
Um, if you know that this um, makeup of these two soil types aren't quite right, you can shift this to, to mm -hmm. what you think it would represent. So if you think it's actually 60-40, mm -hmm. then that's what you can do. The other thing I was, I was talking about is if you do not have um, S maps, which is quite common for a lot of hill country, you can actually add to that. Okay. So we've got uh, we've built in this um, what have we call it advanced soil details. Mm -hmm. So if you do not have it and you know that actually this is quite a, a, a well drained soil, it's a lime, mm -hmm. you can pull this out from the S map map itself. We just haven't had this um, the non mapped brought through, which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so when you put in those details yourself, does it then look up a standard type on S maps or a neighbouring type or something? It nearby? brings through these details, so yep. obviously it does the, the work in the background. Yep. Um, so you can't suddenly go and create yourself a nice pumice soil in North Otago or something, <laughs> which doesn't actually exist? Or you, you can. Know, you can, but... Um, but that would be quite easily to find out what you've done. No, oh, it's interesting talk, you know, just like leave aside the modeling side of things, being able to do blocks and soil types like that is a pretty handy tool in and of itself. So. All right, what's next? So what we've done here is we've actually changed. Um, so you can add in the, the total farm area. Mm -hmm. Um, and what we mean by total area declared as blocks. Um, so there'll be, you'll be able to map your farm and what I did there is I didn't um, include the shelter belt that was included. Okay. Um, so that's what we mean by an area not declared as blocks. Mm -hmm. You can map that shelter belt as trees mm -hmm. um, and the, the area not declared as blocks is things like races and, and sheds mm -hmm. and the rest of it. And OVC does the work in the background so they'll it'll sign leaching and, and run off to those blocks okay. so you don't need to worry about it. So it just uses some industry standards for yes. shelter belts and things, just as some defaults? Effectively. Yeah, so um, yeah, we have defaults for uh, trees, so we've got uh, for our tree block you can add in uh, pines or native uh -huh. um, and, and it'll have its own leaching brought through for that. Um, so now we can have a, a list and, and what's really um, good about FM is it automatically brings through the climate data so you uh -huh. don't have to go out and seek it. It's based on, uh, this is why locating your farm is quite um, important especially with the blocks um, because it'll bring through the, the average temperature and the average rainfall and it'll do that by block so you can see actually um, uh, the, so it's based on the New York climate stations. Uh -huh. It'll, if you know that there's different rainfall um, from the front of your farm to the back hills, it'll yep. actually bring that through. Okay. So what's the, um, I know that NIWA virtual climate network is used for a lot, what's the resolution on that? Is it down to, how, how big you know, is a block to actually have a difference within a block it's, in the NIWA system? It's 0.5 of a hectare yeah. uh, resolution. Yep, so it's right down through, it's yep. pretty small. Um, so um, at this stage you can't um, update those rainfall by month, uh -huh. um, we brought that through, um, which is what you could do in the old software and you can't do in the new software. Okay. So once you've um, created your blocks, um, we'll look at animals next. So just on the blocks, then, do you, what about things like soil test results and soil fertility? Do you add those in yourself? or? What's yes, the, you can. So what are we going to get onto that later? Am I jumping <laughs> oh, so, that's all right. I can get a soil all test right. now. Um, so yes, you can add your soil test results. Um, so if you've got them, say for, it, it kind of depends if you're on a three, average three year soil mm -hmm. test regime, so your soil test is three years old. If you're quite confident mm -hmm. that that still reflects the soil fertility, you can put them in. Yep. But when you kind of go 10 years back, it's probably not reflecting your current mm -hmm. farm practices. Um, if you don't have soil test results, that's okay because OVC will assign default values. Mm -hmm. um, so that's okay if you don't have any. But um, so what you can do is, is if you've got, um, if you've tested your block for the terrace flats, you may have tested a couple of paddocks, so look at the average, mm -hmm. or you can put in each one. In terms of the model and its outputs, how significant is that if you just use defaults versus your own? I mean, is it that It does have an impact. It does, Absolutely. Yeah. So having correct ones mm -hmm. is Yeah, good. it's accurate information is quite important, um, but don't get too stressed if you don't have it. Um, I think the default roughly for 
Sheep and beef farms is about Olsen P of 16, uh-huh. um, and it can go up to 18. So if you're, if you're quite confident that you have higher Olsen P's, uh-huh. I wouldn't put in something that you can't prove. Yes, yeah, again. Um, and that's quite important. Yeah. Don't game the system. No, 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 because it's easily found out. Yeah. 